Hello, hello, and welcome to this episode of the Sanibel Captiva Guide podcast. Uh, I'd like to welcome our guest, Peter Redpath. He is the head pickleball pro at Sundial Beach Resort and Spa. And Laurie said I wouldn't be able to say that in one mouthful. Bada boom, you I got it. it. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Are you so, surprised? Too? <laughs> so, yeah. so welcome, Peter. Thanks very much for uh, coming on the show. Um, tell us a little bit about what you do. Obviously, you're the head pickleball pro, but tell us a little bit about what you got going on over at Sundial. Well, Sundial's got one of the great resorts in the country, as we know. Not only this island is a huge part of it, but we've got 12 dedicated pickleball courts, which is probably the only resort in the country that has all of the... In the country, really? That has all these amenities that is right on the beach and has all of the things. Certainly, uh, we're delighted to be there and de- yeah. developing this program, and it's... Uh, becoming quite the destination which we hope will you know, really help Sanibel. So did Sundial put in these dedicated courts or were they tennis courts that they turned into pickleball courts? These these were uh, five um, old hard tennis courts that basically sat unused, unused. for unused about for years, 10 or 15 the road, years. Yeah, from yeah. The, yeah. And they could not be redeveloped because of the, the restrictions mm-hmm. and uh, the new owner came in and basically saw the growth of pickleball and said why not so yeah. at that point take a gamble he took a gamble and it's you know just the the sport is amazing there's great economic impact to every everywhere it goes and it's it's something you don't have to sell it sells itself right. i guess so. i guess let's start at the very exactly. beginning for those that don't know anything about pickleball laurie and i are very experienced we've played a total of one time i've played twice Ooh, Once she is experienced you. but yes. for those of the for <laughs> those we, of us that haven't played and we loved it we, we loved it it was fantastic so yeah fun. explain explain what it is how you know it's a smaller court obviously than a tennis court it is it's a little smaller it's, it's probably along the lines if anybody knows paddle tennis platform tennis um, and it is a sport that's growing with, with the aging of this population. You don't have to have a tennis background. You don't have to have a, a lot of uh, athletic ability, mobility. mobility right. or it's, it's just a fun sport, and it's something that you, you can go out and, and play with multiple levels of people and still um, have, have a great time. Yeah. What's the width of the courts? Uh, the court is 40, uh, 40 feet about um and by about 24 feet it's basically half a tennis court it isn't is. it yeah it's, it's it's about that so, so one small. one thing i was very surprised that we used to go to a gym that was uh, not far from here and there was a young guy in there in his 20s and um he was talking about pickleball and i said uh i said you don't play he said absolutely i'll play in division whatever it was and it was a very high standard of pickleball he seemed far too young I think it's a mis- misconception that this is just a, a, a sport for the young, uh, for, for the, the old, older. older. Um, it seems like there's Runs really the competitive uh, level of playing even in younger younger people. Is that correct? That is correct, especially on a national level and on a professional level. Um, this has happened to all racket sports. When you have all of a sudden the tennis pros start to get into it, the game, the volume, and the and the pace of it changes dramatically. But it's it's a game that is you know we're trying to bring it to the uh, elementary schools to help that and to teach that we've got young kids coming out all the time playing and just enjoying this sport yeah. as much as their parents and they can basically play with their parents and grandparents and what have you it's right. just a really terrific sport so how did you get into it what was your background were you a tennis player yourself i was for over 60 years at multiple levels and and um hold on over 60 years that doesn't the, the math doesn't work out. No, because yeah. you definitely don't know. <laughs> Sixty <laughs> years, really. I'm Sixty-eight. You're this, such, are you wow. really? You're wow! Such good shape. So, wow! Well, uh, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Just good genes. Good genes. Yeah. Good genes. Okay. Okay. And maybe not. Yeah, good choices, I guess. Yeah. Good choices. <laughs> <laughs> there was a roll of the eyes for those yeah. that are listening. <laughs> right. Exactly. But so I, uh, I was down in East Naples, where the largest facility in the world is, and um, I ended up. Uh, playing at the time, my my partner and I were the number one doubles team in in the state of Florida, over sixty. Yep, yeah. and just had fun. I was having some elbow issues and arm issues that are you know typical of of overplaying in that sport, and I wasn't really wanting to compete anymore it, for whatever reason. The timing was perfect. I basically took all my rackets and gave them to one of the pros here on the island, and basically have not picked up a, a racket since. That's it's nice. been over three and a half, three almost three and three quarters years. So. So and why is the why is pickleball any less taxing on your joints and everything than than a regular tennis? Well, it, uh, number one, it's a smaller paddle. I mean, it, the racket is in itself is a little heavier, so it's less stressful. 
and it the ball what you're playing with is this wiffle ball that really is not as, as stressful in terms of your arm and the compact and vibration as a tennis ball and so, so if you're listening it looks like an oversized wiffle ball about the size of a well, tennis no, ball but with uh, like an air. undersized wiffle ball oh an, an undersized okay yeah. about yeah. a tennis it's, ball it's size it's a tennis ball size it uh, is oh ball. it is a tennis ball okay. size yeah and the bat is a solid bat no strings uh, right yeah. yeah yeah okay and it's just you know most important of all it was about the fun i mean in essence it's like you're going by a park everyone's laughing and having fun it's not you can still get people who are pretty intense and maybe a little too much but I mean, throwing of rackets and well things, or like... hitting the ball too hard at somebody who's right. not as good or whatever that <laughs> happens <laughs> in any sport, any sport. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just a really fun thing for all ages and again all levels of people and, and physical capabilities so and it's just really taking on and there's no barrier to entry you've got people that you know you don't have to be in a country club. You don't have to pay thousands of dollars to go play and learn the game. You can get a paddle anywhere, you know, from Dick's to online for yeah, fifty dollars. I've noticed a lot of the golf stores, local golf stores, are now having paddle ball, uh, pickleball, sex, pickleball oh, sections. sections. Yeah, yeah, no question about it. It's the fastest growing sport the country's seen. And is it true that you could just literally, if you see pickleball being played, you can come up and you can kind of put your racket up and then you can be next in line? Is that how? Correct. At, at all the courts, for the most part, especially the public ones, they have what's just called open play. And you can show up by yourself or with someone else and you put your paddles in queue. And then the next, uh, if, if there's just two of you, two other people will put their paddle in. When a court comes open, you go out and play a game to 11 and step off the court. And then you're waiting around and socializing. And, and that really is one of the fun yeah. aspects of this game. Sundial is a little different because we have a membership as well. But we have open play a couple times a, a day where we have a rack system. The same thing can happen. You come by yourself or come with a foursome and you put your racks in the paddle i mean yeah, the paddles in the right. rack and all of a sudden you go out when the next Which is so what great. do you do you just show up do you have to go where would if you were a player that wanted to come to the sundial and play what what would you do uh well it's a little bit restrictive just at this time of year so we it's restricted in the mornings to members and resort guests who are part part of the sundial program who basically pay to use the amenities and um, so we restrict that and we have a sign up, we have a, an automated system for our members to get themselves signed up for open play and we limit it to a, a 50 of our members plus the resort guests for the morning session, which is nine to 11. Um, people can come and pay for uh, on a date for a day pass for times other than that and oh, in the okay. afternoon. I didn't know that. And um, so it works out very well. I mean, there's other than those two hours of the day, for the most part, there's there's plenty of time to play pickleball. Okay. So would you find yeah. that just on the Sundial website? Is that how you? Yes, Sundial that? website. Okay. And it, and then um, you know what ended up happening is they'll often be directed to me, and I'll clarify it because it's one it just one thing the answer doesn't fit all people's right. requests. And right. And I'm sure during seasons are different down here, busy season and so times right. change and yeah. things and whatever's going on. So mm -hmm. Yeah, so what is if somebody's starting out in pad, uh, pickleball, what what would the, be the typical line of course would you would you do people start with lessons or do they they often do because the rules are different and people don't really know what it is. That's the only thing the scoring is Confu not confusing, but once you get it, the, confusing. Uh, yes. Okay, you say confusing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's not. I think by the end of it, it's we got it. It's not really, but, but yeah. yeah, it is really. No, it, it really, really is something to get a good start. You really for any sport, for that matter, just to get your idea, uh, you know, kind of head around the game because it's a little different. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, that's really what we recommend to people. We have clinics four times a week. Uh, oh, so group, group group learning. lessons, so right. we can kind of help with the concepts and the idea is to basically give people the intentions of the game so that you know i think in most of anything if we don't know what it is what we're doing we get right. controlled by all the factors so we're trying to help people with the intentions so they can go out and play and correct themselves and then and then grow in the game and get better at it. Yeah. And what about equipment? Is there equipment rental, or do you have to provide your own equipment? Do you sell the equipment? Uh, well, I sell. I'm sponsored by a company. Um, there are lots of paddle companies throughout the country. Uh, Sundial has a number of paddles that are there that people can use if they're if they're at the resort or mm -hmm. if they're renting courts. We also have demo paddles available as well. Gotcha. Most places have. Um, a variety of paddles options for people. And is that your sponsor, you TMPR? Yeah, this is my sponsor. I was going to say, Temper. give a shout out to your shout sponsor. Shout out to Temper. They yeah. are in, based in Niles, Michigan. And uh, 
I have played with all the top paddles in this country and had tennis elbow problems uh, with all of them until I switched to temper and their technology in terms of te dampening the vibration in their grip as well as their paddle technology that en enables me to uh, play pain free. And that's oh, a that's huge awesome. thing. awesome. Yeah, yeah, I have tennis elbow myself just going through a big you bout of it. One. So yeah, 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 for sure. All right, I want to know, burning question, why in the world is it called pickleball? It's well, such a funny name. No one it? really knows. It, it was started in Washington State in 1965. Really? That long ago? Yeah. Really? And it's it's just kind of one of these folklore. There's all sorts of things and no one really knows. Okay. Gotcha. Um, right. They've got this thing that they there's also one of the, um, I guess, restrictions or part of the game is called the kitchen, which is seven feet around um, it, on either side of the net. And we're not sure why it's called the kitchen because it really what it is is a non-volley zone where you can't volley the ball when you're standing in that right. zone. Mm. But so there's a lot of fun around, you know, don't get in the kitchen or, yeah. or whatever. But right. it's um, yeah. So gotcha. I heard it was the owner's dog well, was named Pickle. So. That was one of the stories, <laughs> but it's too. not true. So oh, there's okay. plenty of stories <laughs> out there, but none of them are actually <laughs> correct. <laughs> okay. correct. I can't believe awesome. it started that long ago. Well, That's it's amazing. also interesting to me that how many people have been playing this and gym classes in various parts of the country, which, you know, I never, th I didn't know what pickleball was till no. about four or five years ago. Same. And even then I was reluctant to play it because I was a snobby was tennis, tennis player. <laughs> 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 and, um, but at the end of the day, it, it's just, um, just a perfect game. I mean, it's, it really is terrific. Yeah. And uh, we're just fortunate at Sunday <laughs> to have, you know, this great court set up with the golf right there. Yeah, and, and this vibe of the Midwestern Sanibel feel, which uh, no one can top. So. Right. Yeah, and if you haven't been to the Sundale, check it out. Oh if you go gosh, there, yeah. make a day of it. You've got tons of... Or uh, make a week of it. Make a week of it. I mean, there's uh, great uh, waterfront restaurants and dining. Yeah, um, and then after it all, you after you played pickleball, you go to the spa... Get your yes, yes, I one mean, of our favorites, the spa up there. So yeah, yeah for sure. Exactly. All right, cool. Wow, so if a... you, so just to give uh, the greater sport of pickleball a shout out, if you if you couldn't get on Sundial for some reason, are there any big public areas that you can go to in town or, or anywhere else that you could recommend? Well, that's great. The rec center has uh, a few courts up there, and they have program, and they have inside and outside. So I don't... the rec center is right next to the Sanibel Elementary and Middle School on the St. Kip Road on Correct. the way to okay. Captiva. Yeah. Yeah. And there are a couple of places in Fort Myers, one called Wackahatchee, which is associated to a park right next to Lexington Middle School, right, which is okay. right on Summerlin. Yes, that's right. where we played. And right. our, where our kids went to middle school. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then there's another place called Brooks Park, which is down 41, it's by Page Field. Mm -hmm. It's a small airport down in, in the center yeah. on the way into Fort Myers. Okay. And oh. they have 12 dedicated courts oh, there. And it, it's all open play, a uh, very nice facility. They Both Wackahatchee and the Brooks have lights. Wow. Um, okay. There's a, another facility, Fort Myers Racquet Club, which is in town that has six courts where you can make reservations and play there as well nice. for a fee. And... Um, that's a very nice facility run by right. the city. So and there's also one, I believe, uh, a local guy has started one, an indoor center um, it, it, just off the island as well. Boys Beach, boys. Oh, Beach, Beach Boys. Beach Boys. There that's we it. go. So check that right. one out. And that's well. a private club. That's a private one? Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. And then a lot of the resorts, <clears throat> other resorts besides Sundial on the island, are getting into the pickleball craze too and changing Correct. their... And Cassie Bell, uh, I think. Right. Cassie Bell has one or two. Right. But They've got four that are just being about to be redone. They basically um, have resurfaced them, and they should be done in the next 60 days or so. Yeah, cool. so if you yeah. definitely awesome. want to play pickleball. So yeah, any top resort. tips, anything you wouldn't know about, if you wanted to get into pickleball, what would you be, your advice be, whatever the age group, what would you say? First steps, what, what should somebody do? I think people should take a clinic, a general clinic to start, so they get... Um, you know, an understanding of the game. There's, there's actually, uh, we had a sad accident in the, in the state of Florida. Someone died on the pickleball court about six weeks ago, falling over, oh, man. going oh, backwards. Wow. Oh, and I think sad. it's just very important that you get the right shoes, that you basically get the right guidance on the sport and kind of, uh, you know, be careful because people fall and it's a hard court and the people break wrists and yeah. they... Well, uh, speaking of that, we um, have a portrait business and we were doing a family portrait for a, a big extended family 
and they called and the grandmother was 99 was playing pickleball the day before the portrait actually fell yeah, and hurt her right. arm uh-huh. so 99 years old 99 years old playing pickleball yeah. so hats off to her hats yeah, off to her but she made it to the family portrait they put a black sling on her and she was front and center wow. and uh, wow. just I got to take this opportunity just to thank um, Mary Hill Mary Hill was the one that put us in touch with you and uh, thanks for that Mary much appreciated and we have asked people on the show before if you can think of any guests any people that you'd like to see on the show then please do reach out email like mary did uh mary recommended peter peter's here now so please do give us your ideas if you can think of everybody and thanks mary for putting us in touch with peter yeah excellent. great thanks mary yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so excellent so how long does a how long does a typical pickleball game last well it's a game to 11 win by two and it will depend on the uh the level of competition or what have you and they can go very quickly or they can go long um so rather like tennis yeah exactly and it's it's a little shorter just because it's consolidated you only score when you're serving Mm, which sometimes can extend the the game right but um so i would say anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes at the most fantastic okay well it sounds great we We need need to to, we need to go and play i think no we need to say the joke that i told you to say i refuse to do it but but i'm going to apologize already because she asked me to say this and i wasn't going to say it why didn't you do it no you say i can't remember it (laughs) (laughs) we said we heard sanibel has a dinking problem Oh, behave. <laughs> yeah, stop, Laurie. Uh, dinking dinking is and little... drinking. Yes. <laughs> right, which everybody doesn't know. What is dinking? Ah, dinking is the the um, act of lifting the ball gently over the net and having it land in the kitchen in a non-attackable manner. <laughs> ah, I didn't know that was a dink this... was. Yeah, so there, there is a major dinking problem on... Oh, there yes. There are so many people that have taken it up that just cannot stop. Right. They're, they only play it every single day now. So. No question about it. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Okay, yeah. Peter, I've got to ask. Tell us about your other life. We understand you're a bit of a talented musician. Well, I do play a little bit on the island three or four nights a week at various places in Captiva and Sanibel. Okay, uh, some very famous spots. Would you care to mucky, name them? Mucky Duck. The Blue Giraffe over at Beachview. I play at Sundial. I play at the Island Cow. Play at South Seas uh, Resort. And uh, yeah, love it. It's a great balance uh, to do that. Uh, you know, at the latter part of the day at sunset on, on these, in this glorious place that yeah. we live in. And I'm just blessed to be able to do it. So what sort of music? You're playing acoustic guitar, you're singing, what sort of music? Mm-hmm. Anything, you know, from the 60s, 70s, Beatles, uh, current country, anything with great melody, storytelling stuff, James Taylor, Jackson Brown, Cat Stevens, Neil Young. Sweet. So we heard about how you got into pickleball. How did you get into music? Uh, uh, well, that goes way back. It okay. goes back to church. In, in, uh, I sang in a men and boys choir till I was about 19, sang a alto. And so I had, uh, and I also always sang in bands, and I did it for a year and a half or so after college and stopped until in the late 90s and started up some fundraising bands again, stopped and then moved back here in 2010 and started to, I was semi-retired and doing stuff and, and got... Uh, Picked up by Danny Morgan, who was my yeah. agent here on the oh, island, yeah, yeah. and okay. um, so that was it. I just, you know, was fortunate enough to have fit into what they needed, and and this is your retirement, right? This is this is one <laughs> of the gigs. I mean, I <laughs> you still work with Danny week? now? I do. Yeah, he, excellent. He, he, we saw each we saw each other on uh, Saturday night. We had the good fortune. He had uh, one of the uh, third place um, runner up from uh, American, American Idol. Idol when Adam Lambert mm-hmm. won uh, the third place uh, person Danny Goki and he was playing at South Seas absolutely phenomenal yeah. I mean just incredible he does uh, his gospel. Uh, gospel music and, right. but absolutely incredible it was an honour to see him and Danny was there and Amy were there as well checking it out because it's so good but yeah yeah, yeah definitely check it out yeah. and check out the music and, and where are you from originally? I'm originally from Montclair, New Jersey. So, and what's a New Jersey boy doing here? Well, I got transferred here in 1986 with a, a stock brokerage firm based in Charlotte, North Carolina. And um, it was here for 10 years and then got transferred to Albany, New York, and then Philadelphia for 11 years. And then back here um, after a 15 year uh, separation. And, uh, 
you know, I fell in love with the whole vibe of the island and knew this is where I wanted to end up. Yeah. So, so what, you're yeah. staying. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we always ask this to everybody. If you, uh, what would you recommend? Pickleball could be included, I guess, but if anybody that's coming to visit the island, your favorite thing to do as somebody that's on the islands a lot. Or where do you take Well, where would you guess? recommend? Well, um, I think there's some really special uh, things about this island. Number one, not only the bike paths, which are really kind of mm. fantastic to kind of cruise around and, and be able to access places that you normally wouldn't. There are some very special little restaurants that really are a little bit off the beaten path. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorites is the is the patio at West Wind, which is yes, mm-hmm. that's one, of, us. one of the great places Happy to, hour. to watch and to, to have lunch and to watch the see the water, which is yeah. great. Grandma Dots is one of my favorite mm-hmm. places in, yeah. in the world. On the marina. In the marina. On the marina. marina. Um, got you know not to. There's just a lot of great spots. We just like it quiet, and we love you know just biking around and doing our thing. Drive, riding your bike through Ding Darling is is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. that's a great loop to do. And um, you know, I just think that that it's just so midwestern. I mean, you don't. It's unpretentious. Mm-hmm. You can basically be wearing what I wear and smelling like I do right now. Um, Is that why I'm sitting so far yeah, away? I, I apologize. I should have done that early. Right. But you can go to the grocery store, you can go out to dinner, and it's so casual and no one cares. Yeah, it's, it's just it's like lovely. Yeah. I agree. Fantastic. Great Perfect. tips there. So, Max, have you got anything for us? Oh, yeah. Are you ready, Peter? Trivia time. We even have official... Oh, pa- sorry. We our trivia paddles. Uh, yes. Oh, wait. Before we get started, <laughs> yes. Before we get started, I need to confiscate the wiffle ball. The pickleball. Oh, the pickleball. The pickleball. The pickleball. The there must be something oh, about that. Oh, he's got the, the dot. The spots. Yes. I need to confiscate the pickleball. Oh, jeez. Okay. I should know this. But... <laughs> All right. I guess Where's we'll, my phone? <laughs> since it's, uh... We'll start with that question. Uh, so. Pickleball is played with a wiffle ball type ball, which has how many holes? And I was, according to Wikipedia, I was given it. It's not the quickest. (laughs) According to Wikipedia, I was given a range. So if you're in that range, I'll give you the, I'll give you a point. Okay. The answer that I found is 26 to 40 holes. What'd you have? 30. I put 36. I put 52. I put 52. Oh, I right. use a premium ball. Oh, right, right. Worth. Is it is it usually 30 holes? Or yeah, is I it should guess? Know. I you should know. know. Can I you should know. Count the ball. Count you should the holes, I? Man. No, 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 should I really count That would be really boring. We'll put the, we'll we'll put put the, the answer. answer. We'll put the answer. It, it also yeah. depends if it's an inside inside ball or an outside ball. Oh, really? Are they different? Yeah. Well, so who? You both get points because I had a range. It can range oh, between okay. 26 and 40. So, so you're both. All, oh, so Dad was 52. Oh, so you're sorry. Okay, one one. Woo. <laughs> Never in doubt. <laughs> Never in doubt. All right, and it's not the quickest to answer either. I don't know why you threw I, your I was just paddle confident. up. I was just confident in that one. <laughs> Jeopardy. Falsely confident yeah. on that yeah. one. Frequently right. wrong, never in doubt. Yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. All right, let's see if anyone was paying attention earlier in the episode. In what year was pickleball invented? Okay. I've got the first three numbers, but I'm not sure about that. Is that right? Don't you see she looked again? Did you see that, Max? <laughs> she looked. Cheating. I put, Mom? I put 1963, but I think it might be 65. Well, yeah, Peter, what's the answer? 65. 65. Dad has 69. Peter goes into the lead <laughs> with... Oh, no, you can't ring yet. It's not over yet. It's for the end. Peter goes into the lead. Two points to one to zero. All right, come on. Next then. question. I've got this one. And we. this may be wrong, but we'll... Uh, according to Google, it's according right. According to Google, it's right. Much controversy has arisen over the origin of the name of Pickleball. Although the rumor is that the dog... Of the inventors was named Pickles. Right. This is not the truth. What is the accepted truth of the origin? Well, we talked about this when we said and, there's not a truth. Uh, one website I said does have a truth. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, should, so if it were true, if, which it's not, it, it, what would be the most likely explanation? Yes. And it's not the dog. No. <sighs> Whatever answer would that be? Oh, yeah. Well, you guys... The question was originally a A or B question, but was the net made with pickles? Yeah, the net the net was made out of pickles. 
right, just write something. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Peter right. knows much better than this web, random know. website I found. <laughs> is this pickleball.com? Uh, you know, I don't know. Probably. What is your source? Probably some random guy on Wikipedia. <laughs> Any idea, Peter? No, I said maybe his wife made pickles. I put the inventor liked pickles. Dad? Uh, Dad? I'm still writing. Nick's still uh, writing. I'm saying you, you had to play with two pickles in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> not, not one? No, two. Uh, not, no, two oh. pickles in each pocket. That is definitely not true. <laughs> According to this website, it was named uh. in reference to the thrown together, leftover, non starters in the pickle boat. Of crew races. Wow. So in, in crew races, yeah. there would be teams, and then there would be a boat of the oh, leftover people that, that would be thrown picked. together that didn't get picked. And those were the pickle boats in crew races. And, what does that and have apparently to do with pickle they ball? were racing crew that day and came back and wanted to play badminton, but they couldn't find badminton paddles. So they started playing pickleball. Amazing. What Amazing. do you think? That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It, it not works true. for me. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll go with it. We'll go with I it. read it online, so it must be true. Uh, must be absolutely. True. Yeah. Yeah. So, according to that same article, oh, the first pickleball paddles were much smaller than they are now, being borrowed from what indoor game? Oh. They, they were, re- they were oh. repurposed is this, for this. Is this a question we have to write down? Yes. Okay, I got it. What paddles did? Where did they get their paddles to play the first game of pickleball? From what indoor game? What are you going for, Nick? Handball. I've Racquetball. Ping pong. Oh, handball. Ping pong. Is, it? Ping pong. Is, is, is ping pong? Would, I meant racquetball. Yes. Is it ping pong? It's much more of a racquetball size. It's though. definitely the same shape as a racquetball. But yeah. apparently, according to origin story, the first game of pickleball was played with a ping pong paddle. Does that mean we're tied? Now I believe. Oh, we are. <laughs> oh no. We need a tiebreaker. We got a pile of Do I have one more question? <laughs> for the win. Oh, this is actually a really funny one. Okay. This is so, for the win. I can't imagine that the, any sane person would would uh would say this just to clarify. But what? Pickleball has a dinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. It's a song oh. by Midland, I think. <laughs> Pickleball was once described as so loud that it was considered trauma-inducing by at least one citizen, leaving pickleball being banned in this city, the largest one in Oregon. Oh. Um, trauma-inducing. I think somebody might have been being a little bit dramatic that day. <laughs> That was trauma-inducing noise levels. They banned pickleball altogether in Portland. Oh, you just got oh, it! Oh, I had it! Oh, I had it! We had, had it! You had it. all had it! We all had, had it! We had it! You just, I did gave, just us gave us the answer. answer. But you all had it. <laughs> we did all have it. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, there was something in uh, Punta Gorda about the same thing as well. Where there was oh, a yeah. big park and there was a tower block next to it, and they were. Yeah. It's probably reverberating. It, it, it's I everywhere, guess. and they actually had to put in special acoustic tiling for the fencing to basically to, and uh, to to limit the noise. Oh, really? And there, the, some of the differences in the balls. There are clubs or and private, you know, resorts or whatever that restrict to one it's ball called ball. onyx which doesn't make as much noise right. oh. it's the dink it's it's the ping that they yeah. don't like that right it's annoying oh, right. to them really right. Right. i can't imagine that it's somebody was saying that they couldn't have conversations in their own home because of pickleball courts outside their house hmm. that's got to be dramatic right it's it is a little, a little dramatic yeah, yeah a little dramatic Come it's on. actually very fun yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> Yeah, just party poopers being party poopers, I guess. Yeah, so awesome. All right, well, thanks we very tied, much for coming on. Oh, yeah, ring the bell, yeah, ring the bell, you. Peter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, congrats, congrats. Uh, yeah. Good job. Good it's a tie. Nice yeah, work. <laughs> All right, well, thanks very much for coming on, Peter. We're going to put the information uh, in the description below how we can get hold of you. And if do, you, do you have a website? What's the website? Um, for your music? Sundown, oh, oh, that is Sunset Tunes. Sunset Tunes? Sunset yeah. Tunes. Yeah. Com. Yeah. And what, what about com. the Sundial website? Where That's the Sundial Resort uh, 
I think it's just sundialresort.com. So sundialresort.com. I, I, I will link the uh, pickleball page on the, uh, in the description below. Right. Excellent. Okay, so go and check out Peter. Get, go, go grab yourselves a lesson. I think we will too. I think we need to. Then go and, grab uh, a cocktail and listen to Peter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We can have an overindulgence of Peter today. There you go. Uh, Peter and pickleball. Uh, yeah, pickles. <laughs> pickles. pickles. And put two pickles in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks very much, Peter. Thanks, Thanks for coming guys. on. Thanks, Thanks for guys. Uh, Thanks for our sponsors. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Thanks to Mary. And Mary, yes. Thanks Mary very much, Todd, Mary. Yeah. Mary and Tom. Todd. And we'll right. catch you on the next one. See ya. Okay, and a quick shout out to our supporters. Without our supporters, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Bailey's General Store, Doc Ford's Rum Bar and Grill, Spoonger Fine and Bolts, Free Crafty Ladies, Gator Bites, Tail and Ale. Priscilla's of Sandal, Coco E. Cabana, Suncatcher's Dream, and Sandal Cups. Don't forget to reach out to Captain's Wiggling Water, one of our favourites.